Uh, so, good morning, uh, good day, and good evening to everyone, and welcome to this ISTVS digital event series uh, event. Today's uh, ISTVS uh, digital event series event is the launch of the Terra Mechanics special issue on soil modeling and simulation by the editors for the special edition. And the editors are Mihari Tekesti, Tom Way, and Mustafa. Al Sala, and uh, I'd like to, to uh, turn over to uh, Mahari, who will take over and introduce you to the session. So, uh, Mahari, over to you. Thank you again uh, for uh, arranging this, uh, Alex, and inviting us uh, for for this special session to. Uh, to uh, share with the, uh, the audience about the special issue, uh, Terra Mechanics uh, wants to uh, solicit. Uh, together with uh, uh, the guest editors, Tom Way and Mustafa Al Salah, we want to uh, highlight you know, what's the topic and what was the background behind it and what are some of the uh, uh, high level uh, uh, topics that uh, Journal of Terra Mechanics wants to work in getting this special issue. And then uh, towards the end, uh, uh, Tom Wei will uh, share an example of a prior work uh, in this area. <clears throat> So the title of the special issue is going to be Soil Modeling and Simulation for uh, Terra Mechanics Applications of Manned and Unmanned Autonomous Vehicles. So the uh, historical background in uh, Terra Mechanics, uh, there has been uh, uh, models uh, to, to uh, simulate the behavior of the soil and its interaction with uh, a machine system uh, the actual drive unit, and also the uh, attachments, or we call them broadly ground engaging tools. And they were uh, semi-empirical, uh, empirical uh, that relied on experimental data uh, and simulate the relationship or establish the relationship uh, between the variables of interest. The other uh, 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 categories of soil models uh, were computational uh, or numerical uh, based uh, soil constitutive models for either continuum or discontinuum. So with the recent advances in research and engineering uh, for autonomous uh, autonomy or artificial, artificial intelligence, uh, there's a continuous need on how to bring the, the uh, ground or the soil components into the uh, simulation for uh, uh, making uh, a robust decision. Now the trade-off is there's a need for real-time modeling, uh, capturing the physics-based behaviors uh, and iteratively use it for uh, engineering decision. So uh, uh, with this, uh, the high fidelity constitutive models are computationally expensive. Uh, the traditional semi empirical or empirical models uh, give a real time, uh, but the condition that the experimental tests were done uh, may compromise some level of physics or you know, the environment, a new, for example, new soil conditions uh, or change in the uh, soil behaviors. Uh, to, to be simulated by those models. So uh, looking at, you know, the fidelity, accuracy of the model that is simulated um, and how to achieve this is what drives uh, the solicitation. So the Journal of Terra Mechanics uh, solicits submissions on uh, uh, real-time uh, physics-based uh, Terra Mechanics soil constitutive models uh, and look at the computational effectiveness, prediction of accuracy, uh, applicable for off-road uh, vehicle dynamics, mobility, 
energy efficiency under uh, different terrain conditions. We encourage uh, in <coughs> the uh, special issue on the following uh, main points, somewhat robust, real-time, physics basic soil models, and simulation methods on how to integrate them into a, a full-scale system modeling. Uh, real-time locomotion interaction with soil and 3D force formulation in uh, real-time for uh, locomotive and soil contact. Application of uh, you know, real-time soil physics into the performance analysis of machines. It could be design, mobility, efficiency, um, and somewhat assessment on the go if possible. Uh, calibration and validation, and that's really uh, uh, key as well. So uh, there's a, a lot of data, experimental data, that had been collected maybe in the 60s and 50s. Uh, some still try to use them. If they are correct for the environment that they, they tend to simulate, uh, but if it's a different soil behavior or soil conditions, uh, there's got to be a good way to... Um, validate and, uh, and calibrate uh, the models. Uh, the other one is uh, uh, innovative in situ uh, soil extraceptive and coceptive sensors. Those are for robotics or uh, unmanned uh, systems where you would have the internal sensing elements of the machine or the environment such as the soil um, and how to uh, use a sensor models, measurement methods for real-time application. Uh, the proposed target dates, uh, the submission will be open on June 30th uh, the, by the Journal of Terra Mechanics, the online platform. Uh, the intent is to have a final manuscript submission by August 30th. 2023. So with this, uh, I would like to uh, have uh, Tom Way uh, give a, a little highlight of previous study uh, in this area, uh, just to uh, make this uh, meeting uh, interactive and also sh uh, uh, show uh, an example of uh, soil to machine. In this case, it's soil to mobility system uh, prediction. With this, uh, Tom, uh, uh, can you go ahead and, and uh, give a talk and I can move the slides for you? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mahari. So yes, I'm Tom Way with the USDA ARS National Soil Dynamics Laboratory, Auburn, Alabama, USA. And I just have a few slides here uh, about a a paper I was involved just on the periphery of uh, the first author is uh, Dr. Anoop Vargasi with uh, Bridgestone America's Tire Operations in Akron, Ohio, USA. And um, so this is just uh, an example uh, of a paper from several years ago, but that, that may be applicable to this uh, special issue. So, so you know, I, I know there's a very, a very broad uh, variety of topics uh, applicable to this issue, but I just wanted to show just a little bit about one example. So uh, yeah, please, the next slide, Mahari. Um, so this project deals with uh, wheel soil interaction data. And uh, so we uh, data were collected here where I am in Auburn, Alabama at our soil bins uh, using a rigid wheel on the soil bins here. Next slide, please. So just an overview of our laboratory here, Auburn, Alabama. Um, the, uh, the major facility of the laboratory is the soil bin system here. So we have um, the soil outdoor soil bins. You see various soil types uh, there, ranging from very sandy sand to uh, very heavy sticky clays, and uh, in between also some sandy loams and one silt loam. And then the long building uh, with a silver roof inside of there are two indoor soil bins, a sandy loam and a clay loam. And so I'll talk particularly about the uh, the sandy loam results, which is uh, the, uh, 
uh, shown there on the, on the uh, by the label. Next slide, please. So uh, in this project, uh, data were collected using this rigid wheel, 137 centimeters diameter, uh, 30 centimeter width, and uh, on the and I'll focus on the results from this uh, sandy loam soil bin, which is the soil uh, right there shown in the picture. Next slide. So this wheel was put on uh, our traction research vehicle. Uh, the, the yellow arrow in the middle there shows uh, there's a forestry tire on, as shown in the picture there. So that tire was removed and the rigid wheel was put on in that position there and uh, used on the uh, one of the indoor soil bins. Next slide. So just briefly, some of the results. Uh, Dr. Anoop Vargasi uh, uh, did all the uh, uh, computer simulations here. So I used coupled Eulerian Lagrangian analysis. And this is uh, one of the figures from, from that paper uh, showing the rigid wheel uh, with the, the soil. Uh, using, he used abacus uh, finite element analysis. And this particular image shows um, uh, plastic strain uh, uh, um, on the cap surface at each material point. Next slide. And then uh, this is the final slide of this short summary. Um, so uh, in his analysis, Dr. Vargasi uh, did a uh, comparison of the um, net traction, that's the traction force developed by the, the rigid wheel. Uh, so on the x-axis is the measured track net traction from the soil bin project. And then on the y-axis is the predicted uh, net traction from, from the simulation. And these uh, data points here from loads ranging from 2.9 to 11.6 kilonewtons and uh, slips of 11.2 and 23% slip. So back to you, Mahari. Okay, thank you, Tom. Yeah. So uh, I think I'll go back to the, you know, the high level topics that uh, Journal of Terra Mechanics want to solicit again for this special issue. Uh, thank you, Tom. You know, finite element is is one of the methods. Uh, uh, as Tom shared, this was done on Norfolk sandy loam soil. But if we look at the different terrain conditions uh, uh, for different applications, uh, there might be you know uh, manuscript authors could submit for you know how to simulate different soil conditions or different soil types. Uh, if there are uh, experimental innovative methods to, to capture the soil behavior and also in maybe real time the, uh, uh, the mobility systems. Uh, you know, that's kind of an area that we thought there is a, a need as we try to advance this uh, research and engineering for uh, uh, what I mentioned, uh, the autonomous autonomy and uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, focus uh, areas. So will this, uh, Alex and uh, Andrea, so we want to open for uh, discussion uh, and, and comments uh, to the audience. Right, thank you, Mahari. Um, for the audience, there is a chat button if you look at at the bottom of your screen next to microphone there is a button that says next to says, next to the one that says share the next one says chat so uh, if you click on that chat button you can then write in your questions uh, and if anyone would like to join the stage and uh, present uh, their questions uh, on video then or audio, you're obviously more than welcome. So um, we have a question that's coming in. If I have a look at the chat, um, that is that a, a comment, Tom? You'd like to make? I, I see you're referring back to your paper in the chat. Right. Is that a comment you'd like to expand so, on a little? 
So, Alex, I was just giving uh, the, the full title and authors of, of the paper there that I uh, mentioned in my short uh, session segment. There. Okay, so if um, for the audience, if, if you'd like that data, if you just copy, if you just highlight, you can then copy and paste that into another uh, application. Um, uh, that might be the safest way. Um, uh, although Otherwise, we could add that, uh, Tom, when we uh, post the information onto the ISTVS uh, resource initiative uh, page for, for um, this event. So we could add that there. Um, is there anybody who would like to join the uh, platform and ask the question either on audio or um, on video? If you'd like to... click on the camera and mic, then um, please do. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll start off with one. Um, one of the interesting things that I think you, you almost hinted at at one point a little bit is the problem of time it takes to carry out some of these simulations. So if you were working in real time in the field, then uh, trying to carry out these calculations in real time with changing soil conditions is at this stage going to be extremely challenging. So one alternative is to run lots of simulations for different soil conditions, hold a database, and then refer to the database and possibly in interpolate between data in that. Is that something that um, Mahari, Tom, you've actually explored or something that you would be looking at as a way of using the physics-based models in real time? I, I think so. You know, the, there's always this compromise on uh, how much relative accuracy or prediction accuracy you would compromise to, you know, to get a real, not really a real time, but, uh, you know, towards a real time. And then having, a, you know, a, a database of, you know, environments, uh, as you may Call it. It could be like a corner condition that could, you know, either limit the energy or the mobility status. Uh, you know, those those are really good, uh, you know, good interfaces. Uh, because I think there's not going to be a, a true simulation where you would have a, a true ground condition at high speed mobility, and without compromising you know, the true ground behaviors, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But if, if there are in libraries of material databases of uh, a certain instances, like what they do in, uh, in uh, vehicle dynamics, looking at fatigue, it's only a few percentage of the impacts or the bumps, you know, that, that makes, uh, you know, a unique design features in the suspension or or uh, in uh, durability. So it, with the material database, interfacing with the environment, the simulation environment will be a, really a good, uh, a good tool. Uh, I, uh, do you know if uh, Vladimir uh, uh, is uh, in this session? I just want to thank, uh, you know, Vladimir for uh, making this uh, happen. Uh, uh, Vladimir is, uh, is our chief editor of Terra Mechanics. Uh, he was really behind it in this in, in motivating and uh, asking us uh, questions on how we could leverage this uh, as a special issue. <laughs> I should have thanked that first. Uh, uh, and I saw there's no blood mirror. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Uh, I don't mean to divert it, but uh, I think that's really uh, uh, an area that could be uh, uh, used uh, and uh, published in this special issue. Yeah, uh, another aspect of that is is the use of hybrid models um, where you may be able to use um, some of the uh, uh, stored data with uh, collecting real-time data on more of a, um, a traditional approach, if you like, uh, on, on, on handling some of the, um, some of the, the parameters. Um, is that one aspect which you've looked at at all? I don't know, Tom, in agriculture, 
um, it, it's something that that, that might uh, might have uh, um, applications and, and, and work quite well. Right. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not familiar with uh, hybrid models, I guess. And I, and I, 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 my, um, my background is more collecting data from soil bins and from the field and uh, not so much modeling, but Mahari has a lot of experience modeling. Do you, do you have any comments, Mahari, about that? Yeah, Alex. Yeah, I myself. I'm. What What do you mean by hybrid model? I'm. I'm not. Uh, well, we had a we had an example on one of the previous um, DS events where um, uh, I'm trying to think of the uh, of the name of the uh, of the, the presenter. Um, I think his first name was 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 Ashant, and he was using. Um, some uh, uh, it looked as though it was a bit of a mixture, but the actual soil inter in interface with with moving um, soil material, uh, he was using a, 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 a some software which was actually responding quite well, um, almost in real time. Uh, if I I'm trying to remember the uh, the details, um, but it, it it was a technique that could actually be used possibly with 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 others i mean it, it's a little bit like the approach of, of of using different equations for different parts of a problem um and uh depending on the data that you've actually got available to you and how you and how you you use that but it it it, uh, it it's just a, a a thought i'm trying to think how it might be used um and it may be that uh, some parts of the physics-based problem may actually work better with 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 different approaches yeah i think uh, i mean i noticed uh, tom you were using uh abacus for um your prime model but would you use maybe some 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 more physics base for for the for the tire material or something to to, to speed up parts of the model which were slowing you down if if the behavior is fairly predictable then you could actually you know use a database or you could possibly use uh, um some some sort of uh, uh a set of equations which you know you knew were fairly reliable right i, I need to clarify that the the first author dr new Anup vargas he's the one who did all the modeling in that paper um but uh, so I, I've never actually used Abacus, but Mahari has yeah. used it some, I believe. So, uh, so Alex is uh, in the uh, uh, multi-physics simulation uh, approach. I think there's what uh, we use coupling simulations, where yeah, yeah, you would simulate the tire using a finite element approach and then the soil as a discrete element approach. So you would have these two physics. And now we're working with, uh, uh, in my group, with uh, one of our uh, graduate students, where the finite element is simplified for the tire. Um, so that's that's coupling. You know, I don't know if that could be called a, a hybrid. There's another approach that uh, CM Lab. It's a software. I don't know if we have uh, a group from uh, Canada uh, or someone who have used it. Uh, those tools. So uh, there's a real-time solver of, uh, you know, the vehicle systems, and then there's this empirical model, like Makaya uh, uh, cutting models embedded into the simulation. So those are really good real-time, uh, if you may call them hybrid models. Uh, uh, but the coupling is, a, is another term that's used when you do multi-physics where you have, like I say, finite element DM, but the same thing was, uh, there was a graduate student in our lab. She did finish uh, her work where she used uh, multi-body dynamics where the joints were responding to dynamic load from, from a, a discrete element modeled soil. So those are called, yeah. you're coupling different physics uh, I think maybe the audiences uh, might have some experience on uh, different hybrid models, if they could uh, share or 
But I think that that's really also one of the, the advantage of having a special issue is, um, you know, there might be a good way of defining, um, you know, the authors in the 60s and 70s, they, when they were developing the simulated techniques, uh, it was really powerful. So I think uh, this either the hybrid or coupling, uh, if I may call it, uh, it's related to it, uh, could, could be yeah. well defined and uh, you know simulations uh, are presented in this uh, article or or the techniques and how to how to integrate them. Okay. Um, well, thanks. Um, there's, uh, I think, Andrews. Um, you've got a, you put a question into chat. Do you want to ask that on the in audio? Is Andrews there? I see a question. Well, the question uh, in the chat is: Would contactless measuring methods also fit well into this cat uh, this special issue? specifically the measurements of pyrosol deformations. In other words, um, not so much on the actual physics models, but the actual collection of, of data. I mean, we, there's some examples, uh, I think, uh, from uh, South Africa, where they're using contactless models. Uh, the other thing I, I'm thinking of, it, of, of using things like spectroscopy to measure soil uh, parameters as well. Is uh, is that a little bit more towards uh, um, soil sen uh, sensing and, and, and parameters? Is that uh, uh, areas which the, the, the issue will cover? Yeah. Yes, definitely. It's in the last uh, bullet. If you look at the Innovative Institute soil extraceptive or uh, receptive, uh, you know, sensing systems. Yes. Okay. Right. Have we got anyone who would like to join the, uh, the the platform and ask a question or uh, write one into the chat? Anyone at all? Just looking at uh, who's uh, online. There was. Um, one of the, the audience, uh, WQ, um, the first name is Wang. You, you, you did come on, on a, a, a few minutes ago. Did you have a question you wanted to ask? If you just click on the uh, audio, the mic or the cam, and, and uh, if you'd like to join the platform. Um. I have no question. No? Okay. Um, are, are there any other points, uh, Tom and Mahari, that you'd like to, to bring up about the issue? You've got a, um, a submission date for June. Um, would you like uh, people to actually contact you prior to that with their intentions of, of submitting? Let me try to do that. Okay. <coughs> I think, yeah, they can. Uh, uh, it might be good to, uh, you know, if they they want to have the uh, submission open date uh, open earlier than uh, June 30th, you know, let us know. We can work with the uh, Elsevier editorial team for uh, Journal of Terra Mechanics. But if there are any questions, uh, uh, you know, related to this special issue, please uh, send us an email. Okay. Um, any other comments, Tom? Uh, nothing in particular. I think Alex. Uh, yeah, like Mahari said. Um, uh, if, if, if people do want to submit something earlier, that's possible. And uh, I think there's no need no need to contact us ahead of time, of, but we're welcome to uh, any contact from potential authors. That, that'd be fine too. Okay. Um, just a reminder for the audience that the, uh, the session is recorded and the recording will go on to the ISTVS YouTube channel 
um, and is usually available within a within a few days. So um, Mahari's presentation, if you want to go back to that, then the easiest way is to go to the recording on uh, YouTube. Um, the next point, just to, to, to let you know that um, uh, our next uh, DS session is likely to be um, either the end of April or probably the beginning of May, and we will send out uh, uh, publicity to everybody who, who joins any of these sessions. Uh, and to finish off, to thank uh, uh, Mahari and Tom for joining us with this session. It sounds as though this could actually be quite a, a, a useful uh, reference uh, um, for uh, uh, a number of people working in this field. So um, we will uh, have to wait and see, but we would hope that this goes extremely well and is a, a very useful addition to the uh, uh, to the subject. So thank you, uh, Mahari and Tom. I know it's a bit of an early start for, for you two um, and for us in uh, Europe, uh, Africa, it's nice and comfortable in the middle of the day. And for our colleagues in Asia Pacific, it's uh, uh, quite a, a late event. But um, by starting early, hopefully we've been able to uh, um, uh, meet a, a wider audience across the world. So thank you very much for your contribution today. And thank you for the audience for joining us on this ISTVS uh, uh, DS uh, event. So thank you to everybody involved. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for giving Thank us you. the opportunity. Yeah. Looking forward to see uh, get this uh, project completed with uh, a good uh, article at Journal of Terra Mechanics in the special issue. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Andreas, too. Andreas, yes. Thank you.